All right. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. I'll just check that out. Bismillah. So I figured um, while we wait for Sheikh Ahmed to arrive, he should be here any minute, then I might as well. Uh, Use the time that we have together to share some thoughts in addition to what he has already shared. Um, so I'll start by saying that this work, uh, the Hikam, and the Hikam of Ibn Atta'ala, secondary, Rahimahullah, um, there's two additional kind of like opening things uh, I'll say about them. Um, number one, is that one of the things that we often look for in the world of Islamic studies is like which texts are used, uh, which texts are taught, which texts are often taught, you know? So for example, if I want to study Hanafi fiqh, there's hundreds of books I could use to study Hanafi fiqh without exaggeration. And if I want to study spirituality or, or tezkiya or the soul or whatever else you want to call it, then again, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of texts that could be used. But many people will find that, like, for example, when we talk about spirituality, usually what's the first thing that comes to mind for people? Which texts come to mind? Ihya al always, right? Ihya al is always like the primary text. Of Imam al Ghazali, the revival of the religious sciences. If you're looking for like a smaller version, then usually people will see what? The one that Sheikh Fuad taught. Bidayat and Hidayah, the beginning of guidance, right? Um, these are two Ghazalian texts, or oftentimes it will be Ghazali. Maybe these two, there's one or two others that are kind of more famously done. Another text that's very often. Uh, used or referenced, although perhaps not as often taught as the one that we're doing on Sundays now, the Risalat al Mustarshidin, the Treaties for the Seekers of Guidance of Imam al Muhasibi. But definitely, uh, you could say in the world of Al Azhar and I think North Africa more broadly, um, the Levant, Yemen, well, yeah, one of the most widely taught texts is the Hikam. Is the Hikam of Ibn Atta'ala, Rahimahullah. And the commentaries on it are many, 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 many. You know, one of the texts that the Shaykh had yesterday was, I think it was Shah al Khamis Asha. Did you see? I think it was the, the I think it was Sidi Ahmed Zarruq's 15th commentary on the Hikam. Because Sidi Ahmed Zarruq used to, uh, everywhere he would travel and teach, he would teach the Hikam again. And so every time that he taught the hikam, it became like a new commentary on the hikam. So there's actually, he actually has 15 different commentaries, at least. I think there's actually more on the hikam. Uh, it shows, again, kind of the centrality of the text. That's point number one. Point number two, uh, the thing that I often think about when I read the hikam is to me, they are an evidence, in a sense, of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and an evidence of the truth of this tradition. And why I say that is because it is an extremely unique text. And when you read it and you see kind of like, okay, he said this point, and he said this point, and he said this point. Even yesterday, I think Sheikh Ahmed covered maybe like two of them, two or maybe three. Um, the work is over 250, 60 something, I think, right? 260, something like that. So 264 maybe, does anyone have it with them? in that range you know and every single one that you read it you think to yourself subhanallah like how did he come up with this 
And it's 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 such a you really feel like it was a text that was mulham, you know, that there is a level of inspiration to the text. Is that the number? Two six? Two, two sixty-two. Yeah. So it's really a beautiful text, mashallah, and uh, alhamdulillah for the chance to go through it. Uh, online, there's some other, uh, you, some of you may remember, I, I taught the hikam in their entirety during the pandemic. It was a very light commentary. It wasn't obviously at the level that Sheikh Ahmed is doing. But another one that's, uh, or one that's really good online is uh, Sheikh Walid Musan, who we've had in, in the majlis before. He has a commentary on the hikam online. I don't think it's complete yet, but it's it's really quite good. So if you're looking for more after this sessions, then I would definitely encourage people to look that up. I don't know if it's on YouTube. It's definitely on SoundCloud. Uh, for sure, it's on SoundCloud. I'm not sure about YouTube. So, uh, But you can find it through his organization, Sabeel, S-A-B-E-E-L. Uh, and that's very, very good. And, and Sheikh Walid is someone who's you know, very qualified to teach that text. So that's definitely something to benefit from. Okay. Uh, with that being said, uh, Sheikh Ahmed, honest. Hmm? He's here. <laughs> no. Maybe just read me, open it and read any random thing. Yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Do the first one? It's somewhere else, because I always talk about the first one. Wow, okay. That's a nice one. So, Ghayyib, you said? Ghayyib, no. yeah. So, uh, what's up? Okay. It's Ghayyib, mean, it means basically, uh, you know, Ghayyib to make something, something that's in the unseen. So, I'm delaying. Here we go. Say it again. Huh? So basically, out of your recognition of Allah's looking at you, let that be so uh, dominant, so to speak that it makes it so that people looking at you becomes as if it's unseen, right? As if it doesn't exist. So you have two possibilities. If you think about, we could be overwhelmed. I think normal human existence is we're overwhelmed at some level with people looking at us. So when people look at us, they're gonna think this and they're gonna think that and so on and so forth. And then the ultimate reality of things is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware at all times of everything that is going on with us. And so that is, uh, let that be so clear to us that the looking of the creation it becomes as if it doesn't exist. And, and then also in regards to Allah's come, like uh, same thing with regards to like people's attention to us, not just looking, but that they come to us, that Allah witnesses us and is with us, is, let that be more powerful than them coming to us such that it makes those things unseen. Anyways, Bismillah. What a coffee cup. How you shake? That's I was just, yeah, I want to say, I'm sorry. Bismillah. We'll pass it over to Shaykh, inshallah. Allah. Thank you. Thank you. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين اللهم أبسط علينا من رحمتك وأفض علينا من حكمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم We possibly continue from the theme that we have touched upon yesterday uh, which is about حقوق الأوقات 
وحقوقهم في الأوقات. And we mentioned that Ibn Atayillah highlights some of the uh, indications of how do we know if we are really respecting the حقوق of the times and the حقوق حقوق الأوقات الحقوق في الأوقات. He said إحالتك الأعمال على وجود الفراغ من رعونات النفس. Delaying and postponement of deeds until you have the free time is an indication of the frivolity of the ego. And we also mentioned that the person should not keep running from the universe back to the universe. A sign of going around in circles and uh, disrespecting the haqq of the time is that a person is like himar raha like the donkey in the mill. He moves from the universe back to the universe. And we also mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like al-qalb al-mushtarak. So he does not like a heart that is shared by others. In the same way as he uh, does not like al-amal al-mushtarak. One of the uh, indications that the person also does not have respect for the awqat is istihqaru al-wird, belittling the word. Word wird in Arabic comes from the fountain of water. Warada to come to specifically water. Al-warid, the word is to come to the fountain of water. In the Quran, in the story of Musa alayhi salam, walamma warada ma amadiyana, wajada alayhi ummatan min al nasi yasqoon. When Musa arrived at the water of Madian, he found a group of uh, shepherds giving access to their sheep to the water. So a word is almost, is literally, is the daily recitations of dhikr that you read every day. Some ulama call it wazifa, because you employ uh, what you recite every day, you employ this time in this job. So that's called wazaif. And you can actually expand on the word wadaif and you say that لِكُلِّ وَقْتٍ وَظِيفَةٍ Every time has a, has a job. And you can say لِكُلِّ وَقْتٍ Word. So there is a word for every, every moment. But word essentially is that since you come to the water every day, you need to come to the water every day to, have, uh, to, to bring water to, to your house. You also need to come to the uh, recitation of your dhikr every day. That can be word from the Quran. So you specify an amount of the Quran that you recite every day. It can be a page, a page or it can be a juz. It can be anything. Even it can be an ayah. But the point is, this is something that you do frequently because it is your way of accessing the Quran. It might be a word from salawat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa It might be a word from dhikr, general dhikr. It might be a word of dua. The whole point is consistency. And what he wanted to say to us here is that some people belittle the awrad. And their reason for belittling the awrad could be because they cannot stick to a schedule and consistent schedule every day. Or it could be because they are belittling the amount that they're doing every day. You know, like someone who says, what will this little thing do? But it's not about that little thing. It's about consistency. It's not about the amount of the word. And that actually, that theme dominates a lot of people who come to a spiritual path or come to any big plan in their life. You have an opening and you want to, you decided to start, let's say, memorizing the Quran. That's a project. I'm going to memorize one juice every day. That's not the point. So the role of a teacher here is to bring the person back to the little amount, but to make sure that they keep that consistency because they, they burn out very quickly. People burn out very, very quickly. C.S. Lewis, and I like that, he says, beware of the novice. Beware of the novice. Be careful about the ones who are new. Because the ones who are new are very rigid. Someone has just discovered his deen. Then they become very rigid. Look around at people and start 
judging this person and judging that person and judging this person. Someone learning a little bit of fiqh and then they're starting to think that they know everything. Someone learning a little bit of aqidah and then they started categorizing people, kada, kada. Uh, or jumping to takfir, for example. They do takfir for things that do not warrant takfir at all. That has a lot of ihtimalat, a lot of possibilities. So we have that disease as human beings of belittling the word. Of belittling the word, belittling the consistent, the little things that you do. A man passed by Imam Suki, rahimahullah, and he was doing his wudu. And he was washing more, more than three times. So this man said to him, don't you know that the sunnah is three? He said, if I knew that the three are perfect, I would have sufficed with three, but I'm not sure if my three cover all my limbs. So it is about uh, appreciating the little that you do. So he says, لا يستحقر الورد إلا جهول. Only a person of complete ignorance would belittle the word. Because the arifin, the knowers of Allah, and the salikin and the travelers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they understand the benefit of the word, even if it's very, very small. Like someone going to their teacher and say, I would like to memorize a text. Okay, memorize two lines every day. Only two lines. I can do more than that. If you, can, if you can do two lines, that's perfect. No, but I can do more than that. Just do two lines. But I can do more than that. Or at another instance, someone uh, discovers they have a lot of failures in their life because of different bad qualities. And then they say, in Ramadan, I'm going to get rid of this habit and this habit and this habit. It's only 30 days. There's such a short time to deal with big problems. You accumulated these big problems over the years. You need years to be able to get rid of these problems. Time is part of medication. Time is part of healing. Time is part of like getting rid of bad qualities. Like someone who wanted, who wanted to uh, be treated as an old man. You know the famous story, anecdote, of the, um, of the crow that wanted to walk like a, a peacock. So a crow decided, since everyone is showing their fascination with the peacock, that he is going to spread his wings and his tail and walk like a, a peacock. All the crows were laughing at him. <laughs> And he kept walking like that until he actually mastered the peacock walk. But he was never a peacock. After a while, he tried to go back to the normal. He came to the realization that he was mistaken. He said, okay, since everyone is laughing at me, let me just go back to the normal crow walk. He couldn't. He couldn't go back. So he was refused. And then he said, okay, let me go to the peacocks and introduce myself as a peacock. They laughed at him and said, <laughs> get out of here. So he was not accepted by the peacocks and he was not accepted by the, the crows. Why is that? Because he thought, if I pretend to be someone else and I do these things in that way, so and the problem is what? Is he realized, that he didn't realize that there is no way that you can become someone you are not able to become. You can only become yourself in a, in, a, in a better way. And one of the things that people normally, that cause people so much stress, is continuous com comparison between yourself and somebody else. Not realizing that that another individual has their own challenges and problems. And you have your own challenges and problems. And spiritual wayfaring is about being the better version of yourself, not the better version of somebody else. So cut the comparison. Again, you know, sometimes you come to a teacher and then he gives you a, something to recite or something to read or something to commit to. He gives another person something else. 
And then you say, mm, can I try this? Or you can't try the prescription. You, can't, you cannot try a prescription given to somebody else. Why? Because you don't have the same illness. You don't have the same challenges. You don't have the same problem. You don't have the same heart. And there is no way that I'm saying that you have a better or a worse heart. You just have a different heart. لا يستحقر الورد إلا جهول. Don't belittle that which has been put in, in your plate. Just eat it. Because if you eat it, Allah will increase you in it. لا إن شكرتم لا أزيدنكم. And gratefulness is to take what has been offered to you and embrace it. Whether it's your children, whether it's your challenges, whether it's your husband or wife, whether it's your job, whether it's your illnesses, physical illnesses, even spiritual illnesses. I was saying to the brothers and sisters in Ta'lif, when we read in the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Part of the wusr is Allah gives you the diseases that you can take. The challenges that you can take, the children that you can deal with, the problems that you can handle. This is part of the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And trying to disbelieve in this is attacking Allah's wisdom and thinking that Allah is unwise for giving you something that you cannot bear. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not ask a soul beyond if what can take. Then لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت. And then what is the response of the true believers? سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We listen and obey. They trust. We read in the Quran the story of Sayyidina Yunus السلام, who thought that the challenges that Allah put him in facing his people were beyond his capacity and therefore he does not have to stay and invite them. So he decided to go. To go away. فَظَنَّ أَلَّمْ نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ i.e. we he thought we will not tighten things for him. Qadra here is not from qudra, it's from qadr to make things tight. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ Tightening things for him. So uh, Sayyidina Yunus thought that that mission is optional. It's not an obligatory. It's not an obligation. He thought it's not an obligation. It's an optional thing. So why should he be tasked to stay there? So he left. But he didn't realize that leaving is a disaster because you have left what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned for you. And there is no one who can take care of this. Like someone who leaves their children and then go and do something else or they leave their job. Ibn Atala discusses that somewhere else. He says, إِرَادَتُكَ الْأَسْبَالِ like wanting the world of dedication when Allah places you in the world of means is a hidden desire. Wanting to go down to the world of means when Allah puts you in the world of dedication is lowering yourself from the, the higher aspiration. This is very important to, to understand what is it that is that Allah wants from me. Now, لا يستحقر الورد إلا جهول. Only a person who is completely ignorant will belittle the value of word or the benefit of word and the importance of it and the impact of it because they measure things in a way that they shouldn't. So has this word produced the benefit? Well, for the word to produce the benefit, you have to do that for a long X amount of time, like long, long enough for it to start showing. It's benefit. When someone has a, if you give someone a, a rope and you say, can you cut this big rock using this rope? They will say, what would a, a rope do to the rock? Yes, you can. If you keep pulling and pushing. In the end, you can crack the, the rock. It's consistency. Is that consistency? You know, when you find someone who makes drawings on wood like in southeast asia they do that that art or on copper all the details like some parts of the uh, india and the subcontinent the, the sunna these artisans they care about the details the little details and they have to be very particular very very particular so that like the arabisk have to be very particular because once one piece is not in place the whole thing 
like the the designs in Morocco, very particular about the colors, very particular about the arrangement. And what does that require? It requires sabr. It requires the person to have what? Sabr and nothing else. And then someone might think, what am I doing? I'm just like sitting there, not doing anything. You are doing, but I'm just watching. Yes, you are, but you are learning. This is the whole learning process. We lost in the age of machinery, we have lost that ability to be patient. Al-Kitab, writing. I was saying to the brothers and sisters, like some of the ulama used to like complication to test the smartness of people. So I came across this uh, end of one of the books. The scholar was talking about, we, we wanted to say which, the, the, the date in which he completed the book. So I said, Khatam to, I completed this on the 9th, 10th, the 9th, 10th of the third, third, of the third, sixth, the second half. He's talking about the 29th of Ramadan, the 29th of Ramadan. It's the 9th, 10th of the third, third, of the third, sixth of the second half, because Ramadan is number nine, isn't it? So it's the third, sixth. In, in the second half. Of the fourth, tenth, that's number, year number four. Of the ninth, tenth, that is 84. Of the second half of the Hijrah, so that's 1084. So 29th of Ramadan on 1084. It's like, showed it to my wife and she said, why, why can't he just like say the 29th of Ramadan? He said, exactly for that reason. So that al mutatafilun yamtani'oon, those who are curious and they they they, they, they run away, صح? They, they they don't have to continue, they, they discontinue. But then you take that as a challenge. Like people <laughs> deal with this, this is like almost like Sudoku. <laughs> like their traditional way of crosswords. <laughs> right? They they used to enjoy that. They used to enjoy that. And we find in, in our tradition so many uloom like that. You study Ilm al-Falak, Islamic astronomy, which I decided to spend a few months during COVID studying with one of the mashaykh in uh, Tiznit in South Morocco. And then all of the, uh, the, the, the numbers in Ilm al-Falak are written in, uh, in Abjad Hawus. Abiyatuhu sundun wazid al-khumsu wa sudsu minhuma yakun kum. Sund, 354. وكحي قاعدة 25th of القاعدة حا محرمي 8th of محرم and it goes on like that on and on and on and on and it goes even deeper than that and then you go to Imam Shatabi in القراءات and then he has a whole, a whole different code of the different قراء وها أنا ذا أسعال على حروفهم يطوع بها نظم القوافي في مسهلة جعلت أبا جاد على كل قارئ دليلا على المنظوم أول أولا ومن بعد ذكر الحرف أسن رجاله متى تنقضي آتيك بالواو فيصلا سوى أحرف لا ريبة في اتصالها وباللفظ أستغني عن القيد إنجلا ورب مكان كرر حرف قبلها لما عارض والأمر ليس مهولا ومنهن للكفي ثاء مثلث وستتهم بالخاء ليس بأغفلا عنيت الأولى أثبتهم بعد نافع وكوف وشام ذالهم ليس مغفلا وكوف مع المكي بالظائم that's a system. It's a system of testing your patience and your seriousness of seeking knowledge. And in the same way, the spiritual learning that we engage in is there to test our ability or our willingness to continue that straight path and to commit to that straight path. And once you loosen that commitment, the requirements of that commitment, you are lowering your standards. Like someone who wants to go to a university and then imagine if certain universities are open for everyone. How would we know a hardworking student from a non-hardworking student? Only someone who does not appreciate the value and the importance of the word, even if it's small. And that's why when the person belittles the value of the word, they might neglect it completely or they might do it out of time or they might delay it all the time, or they might do it with complete 
disregard to presence. So they're doing it and doing something else. And what happens? Because these different states, outwardly, you might find that the person is, re the, the, those who are reading the word are the same. They're reciting the same thing. But attachment and readiness varies from one to another. So he says, وروض الأمداد بسبب الاستعداد وروض الأمداد بسبب الاستعداد The divine graces come based on preparedness and readiness and presence in the dhikr and the word. So when someone does disrespects the word by not being present there or neglecting it completely, imagine if someone has a habit of delaying salah to the end of time. The end of its time. Every day they catch dhuhr at the end of its time. Or another person is busy with work and all of that. And they pray their four daily prayers at the end of the day together. And then they say, I don't feel any presence in my uh, salah. Of course you shouldn't. Of course. You push it out of time. It doesn't have any... You don't have any respect for it. You don't have any presence in it. You don't appreciate it. So why should it appreciate you? وروض الأمداد بسبب الاستعداد So a word, in essence, هو ترتيب العبادات في الأوقات So word is to distribute the ibadat in times. And ibadah here is its generic meaning of being with people with good intention, taking care of your family with good intention. ترتيب العبادات في الأوقات Organizing and distributing the duties of the time. قال وفائدته رد النفس بالحق عن الباطل. What's the benefit of the word? What's the essential benefit of the word? It pushes you away. It pushes the nafs from engaging in something fruitless, something of no value. Because the nafs always wants to be busy. It needs to be kept busy. If it's loose, it will connect to something useless. But if it is kept busy and engaged, then it will be better. Michael Sugic mentions in the lights of the horizons. Is it light of the horizons? Signs in the horizons. He mentions of that Indian teacher who people would go to and he would just make them sit down and like try to hear the noise of the universe, like try to hear things, like try to hear the voice of the birds and try to hear them. And it was quite interesting. And then he asked one of his teachers about that practice. He said, yes, this is called shogl. It's like called work and engagement. So this sheikh way of tarbiyah, spiritual tarbiyah, would be to engage the murid of doing something, make them do something. Because if he sits there and the sheikh is doing something, he's observing the sheikh. If he sits there and some other murids, uh, students are saying something, he would just be listening. So instead of like chit-chatting and talking and this and that, he just says, try to do this and try to do this and try to do that. Sometimes we would, uh, we used to go to one of our teachers when we were like little kids and we have to wait for our rota in recital Quran. Like we have already memorized. We, we have to wait. And the sheikh would give us something to do. Sometimes his wife is cooking. <laughs> And we are, she's making kosa or something, what you guys call zucchini. What do you call it, Yusuf? Yeah, kojet. Kojet, yeah. a.k.a. zucchini. Right. And then he would give us that and say, say, cut it for my wife. So basically, we're preparing what she's going to cook for the day. <laughs> it's like, I'm here to recite Quran, not to make, uh, not to prepare the, the food for the week. But it, what he knew that otherwise we would mess about. Like if you're 10 years of age and you're sitting around the sheikh for like half the day. So he would just like say, and he would like send us, do this and do that and do this and do that. Like some people, after some time, they would compete to look for the, 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 the least job or the one that if, the, if the, the khala, the wife of the sheikh, if you help her with like the, the kitchen or something like she give, she she would give you some sweets. So people would fight on playing that role. <laughs> because, you know, the, you get paid in the end. But it was the sheikh's way of tarbiyah. Like you, otherwise, you'll be messing about. You'll be causing so much hassle. 
My father, Rahmatullah Ali, actually used to do that with me all the time. So one day he would say, we had a, uh, a little garden in front of the house, and he would say, I want you to make a, a pit here, a hadr. And he'll give me an axe and I'll make a deep pit. I'm thinking that he's possibly preparing like to do something, possibly uh, put some uh, trees or something like that. And then after like an hour of workout, he will say, shuf, put the dust back. After like a, a, an hour of workout, or sometimes he would like trim the hedges of our garden. And he would say, yalla, this is how you do it. Yalla, take that. And what are we doing with this? He just like gathers it and burns it. Jobs like these, a lot of jobs like these. But in the summer, it's a summer holiday. Like nothing else to do. And if you keep uh, studying, sometimes you go crazy. And, and I, I, I used to like be engaged in that. So he would engage me in something that actually makes me have that workout. By the end of it, like you need a shower and you're sweating. And otherwise, you'd be messing about. So fa'idatil word is that it keeps you busy with something beneficial. That's the, the bare minimum. The one who belittles the word is ignorant because of these uh, benefits or because of these reasons. Number one, there is so much reward that you are in need of. You shouldn't belittle that. You shouldn't neglect the reward, uh, the reward that is there. Like sometimes we belittle little, little good deeds. And we don't know that these little good deeds could be the way of saving us on the Day of Judgment. Even if it's something really, really small, it could be one surah you recite. It could be uh, teaching someone. It could be one word. And the Prophet ﷺ highlights and points our attention to these little things, these little deeds. Protect yourself from hellfire, even if it is by giving one half a date. Walau Beware of the word, just one word. In rajula bil kalimati min yarqa biha daraja. You might say something good. You go higher in degrees, and you speak a word of falsehood. It takes you down seventy years down the hill. Wa inna rajula yatakallamu bil kalimati min sakhatillah. These little things. Beware of these little things. So you definitely need the little thawab, these little rewards that are associated. So if you do not know the benefit of the word, and you know that definitely there is some thawab associated with it, then, and you neglect it, definitely this is a sign of jahl. قَالَ وَفِيهِ مِنَ الْعُبُودِيَّةِ وَالْحُضُورِ بَيْنَ ذَيْهِمَا يُجِبُ إِثَارَهُ the word means you are in presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why should you prefer anything else over it? That it is like a cleansing process. Every day you take that spiritual cleansing. So it will clean you over time. If someone tells you you have to observe a specific diet and then you will lose weight and all your illnesses will disappear. The ajz, the real ajz, the real inability is not to discipline yourself and commit to that. If you know that this is your safety and this is your health and this is going, this was going to, to make you better and you can't hold, hold back, what does Ashaq al-Busiri say? وَرَاعِهَا وَهِيَ فِي الْأَعْمَالِ سَائِمَةٌ وَإِنْ هِيَ اسْتَحْلَةِ الْمَرْعَى فَلَا تُسِيبِي كما حسنت لذة للمرء قاتلة من حيث لم يدري أن السم في الدسم وخشد سائس من جوع ومن شبع فرب مخمصة شر من التخام. Like observe your nafs when it is grazing deeds. وراعها وهي في الأعمال سائمة. السوم is when something is like when the sheep are grazing. Observe your nafs when it is grazing in the in the deeds when it is engaged in the deeds. Why? When he is tahlatil mar'a, when once it likes that field, don't let it. Why? Because it might be destroying itself, thinking that it is saving itself. When he is tahlatil mar'a, fala tusim. 
Remember that what you do with the nafs is you are trying to train the nafs not to settle in one place. I, what will I get if it doesn't sit in one place? It will always believe that it is traveling. It will always be ready. Whenever the caller of Allah summons it, it will travel. But once it sits down on one deed, halas, it will think that the world is, is narrowed down to that. Beware of that. But be very careful about the tricks and the traps that can be satiation and can be starvation. Some people think, yes, you know, we should not fill our stomachs because that is a, a big trap for our souls. Yes, but starvation can also be a trap for your soul. When you think that starving your stomach makes you a better person, i.e. you're better than others. You don't need any of that. There might be someone who is eating his food and he goes to bed brokenhearted that he's negligent. Someone does not wake up for salah. Yes, missed the salah, he overslept. And he wakes up in the morning full of regret and sadness. And another person woke up with his eyes full and then he looks down upon the other. We don't need that. You don't need that. Yes, you should. we should all, all wake up for salah and we should always be committed and all of that. But be, beware of the trap. There might be a time of starvation that is worse than the time of satiation. So it is, a, again, you know, the word works on cleansing you, and you should not leave that. And then he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, la yastahkur al wirda illa jahul. And then he says, al warid yujadu fi dar al akhira. The graces and the benefit of the word is given in akhira. Wal word yantawi bin tuwa'i hadhi al dar. The awrad will finish by the end of this world, meaning, don't belittle it. You only have a small opportunity. Again, you know, we go to Hukukul Awqat. What's the Hakul Waqt? Hakul Waqt is to be engaged with the word, is to be engaged with the deeds, but without asking and expecting the reward, without expecting anything. Al word huwa talibu mink. Al word is what he requests from you. Wal warid anta talibu mink. And the warid is what you asking from him. Wa aina ma huwa talibu mink, ma huwa. Uh, like how can you compare what you want from him to what you what he asks you for meaning he is asking you for that little and he'll give you that much he asks you for something that you may neglect or you may fulfill it, but he will give you something that he will never neglect what is with him is secure and what with you is not what with him is sure and what with you is not. What with him is his. What you do is not yours. It is what he has enabled you to do. What you are requesting from him is his. So when he is Kareem and he gives, he is given from his ownership. He is given from his kingdom, from his dominion. But what you give or what you do is from the power that he has provided, from the wealth that he has provided from the time that he's provided, from the hidayah that he's provided. So you're not actually giving anything. He is the giver in both situations. He is the giver in all situations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah At-Tawbah, ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُ And the ulama said, he initiated their tawbah. So they made the tawbah. So when someone returns to Allah, they do not return because they had just an opening. No, they return because Allah gave them permission to return. And huwa muriduhu alayk. He has written for so and so to return back to him on this day. ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُ Sayyidina Umar, as we all know, says, إِذَا فَتَحَ لَكَ بَابَ الدُّعَاءِ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ يُرِدُ أَنْ يُعْطِيَكَ 
if he opens the gates of dua for you, be assured that he wants to give you. But we become so busy and almost question his giving that we forget that the fact that he has given you opportunity to make dua, that itself is, a, is, a, is the gift. The gift is, قَالَ إِذَا فَتَحَ لَكَ بَابَ الدُّعَاءَ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَسْمَعَ صَوْتَكَ If he opens the gate for you to make dua, that's enough indication that he wants to hear you. Even if he de delays giving you, he just wants to hear you, you, you turning to him more and more. لا يستحقر الورد إلا جهول الوارد يوجد في الآخرة والورد ينطوي بانطواء هذه الدار الورد هو طالبه منك والوارد أنت طالبه منك وأينما هو طالبه منك مما هو يطلبه منك Therefore we should always be busy with what am I doing every day what am I adding to my life what is it that I am fulfilling every day that makes my day better than my yesterday, not equal to it. Well, otherwise you'll be deceived. If my day and my yesterday are equal, then I'm deceived because my life is in loss and my actions are same. But what if your day is worse than your yesterday? Then that's even worse. Fi hadith, man istawa yawmahu, fahuwa maghboon. Like the one whose two days, today and yesterday are equal, he's deceived. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَوْمُهُ شَرٌ مِنْ أَمْسِهِ فَهُوَ مَحْرُومٌ And the one whose day is worse than his yesterday, his today is, is worse than his yesterday, he's really deprived. قَالَ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ فِي مَزِيدٍ فَهُوَ فِي نُقْصَانٍ If you're not in increase, you're definitely in decrease. It's not, there, is, there is nothing called I am still the same. If you're not in, in increase, you are in decrease. وَمَنْ كَانَ فِي نُقْصَانٍ فَالْمَوْتُ خَيْرٌ لَا If you are in decrease, then you better leave this world. والحسن البصري رضي الله عنه قال أدركت أقواما كانوا على ساعاتهم أشفق منكم على دنانيركم like I've met those people who were so cautious and careful and concerned about their time more than you were cautious and concerned about your money like we know very well when to spend and how to spend and what to put our money in so they were very careful what, do they, what can they do with their every minute of their life. Malik rahimahullah ta'ala went to his teacher Ibn Shahab al-Zuhri on the day of Eid. And Ibn Shahab al-Zuhri asked his khadima, is there anyone at the door? Qalad ghulamuk al-ashqa. That blonde uh, student of yours. It's kind of like, Malik rahimahullah is kind of like fair skinned. I mean, uh, had like a white hair and he was big. So he said, come, let him in. He said, what are you doing here today? This is a day of Eid. It's not a day of classes. He said, I know. It's a day of Eid. And I know everyone would be busy with their celebrating Eid with their family. That's the best time to come to you. Khalid Liz. Now he sat him down and started narrating some hadith and he narrated like 40 hadith to him. And Malik said, Zidni, he said, well, if you memorize these, I will add, I'll give you more. He said, no. He grabbed the, 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 the papers. He said, recite. And he recited. Stand and go. You're like a, big, a vessel of knowledge. And Malik Rahimullah used to say that I would, he would, in his trousers, he would make them cushioned. So he would put some kind of... A, cushion to the bottom of his trousers because he used to sit outside the house of Mishab Zuhri for long hours waiting for the class and waiting for the, a moment to, to study with Ibn Shahab Zuhri. So he said, like, I used to feel the pain of sitting that I may have had to, to make in the sarawil in his, his trousers. He would, he would make them cushioned with like a cushion, cushion lining, right? So he was very careful about every second, every minute, so much so that they would count the difference between the time it will take to chew the food, chew bread, and the time it will take to just smash it and swallow it. And they said 20 tasbihah, 20 tasbihs between the two. 
that they would know how it will be. Kutub al fiqh, they say, how would you know the time between, uh, for example, the, the crack of the dawn or the, the false dawn and the real dawn? They said, if you cannot, well, before the invention of the clocks, he said, Yudbatu binahwi wird. Imam al Dardi says, Dabatahu fa in khafi alayhi al waqt. Dabatahu binahwi wird. If you don't know the time, if you don't know the time, then you can measure it with a specific word. You know, like 50 ayah or 30 ayah or 20 ayah. This is how long it takes me to get from A to Z. Yeah, they talk about falak, for example, and they say, when, How do we know the, the, the time of zawal? Well, zawal is when the sun moves from the meridian. And then, as soon as the sun moves, it's like almost half a degree. Half a degree. I have an astronomical degree anyway. And an astronomical degree is four minutes. Right? In the Jumhur. It's five minutes. So, they said, it is two minutes or reciting Qulhu Wallahu Ahad 20 times. That, that precision, reciting Qulhu Wallahu Ahad 20 times, that takes about 20 minutes. So they had that precision because they cared about their awrad. They cared about their lives. A man said to Ishaq ibn Rahawain, I would like to talk to you. Qala amsik shams Hold the sun, meaning from moving from its place. If you can hold the sun, that it doesn't move from its place. لا يستحقر الوردة إلا جهول. This is this is very very essential. Put your life in order by establishing a specific awrad of remembrance of Allah, of studies, even in your social life. A word of spending time with family. A word of talking to your boys and girls. A word of being with the community, a word, and don't let these awrad overtake the time of one another. قالوا من العقوق تضيع الحقوق. One of the signs and indications of disrespect is neglecting the rights. تضيع الحقوق من العقوق is a sign of disrespect and complete disrespect. And that, that, what does that mean? Don't let the times creep into one another. Do you want us to stop? Okay. Uh, we'll pray, inshallah. No, we don't want to delay Maghrib. No. I'll break the money. Sorry, man. <laughs>